In this video, we'll learn to round numbers to the nearest 10. Nearest 10, what does that mean? It means that you count it up in tens and you find in which of these tens is the number closest to. So we're counting up in tens just like before, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. So I'll label these divisions in the number line. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. As it happens, these are all pens. So we're talking about 0 pens, 10 pens, 20 pens, 30 pens, 40 pens and 50 pens. Now, when you spend 29 pens on buying something, do you say you've spent 20 pens or roughly about 30 pence. I say about 30 pence and the reason why is because if I try and place 29 in this number line it is very close to the 30 and that's the reason why. If I had spent 21 pence for instance that would be very close to 20 so I would say I have spent 20 or if I spend 22, 23 or 24. 25 pence goes up to 30, 26, 27, 28, 29, again, go up to 30. So let's have a look at the other examples as well. We've got 16 pens. So where does that fit? 16 pens stands between 10 and 20 because it's larger than 10, but it's smaller than 20. So there is 10 and that's 20 in the middle, right in the middle will be 15. And we said that 15 would be rounded up. So that would go up to 20. But also all the numbers in between, such as 16, 17, 18, 19, they would go up to 20. So 16, which is placed right here, is rounded to 20. 20 pence in this case. Now let's have a look at 43. Where does that go? 43 is between 40 and 50. There would be 45. So 44, 43 would be here. And as you can see, 43 is much closer to 40 than it is to 50. So we'll round it to 40. Now, 35. 35 is right in the middle between 30 and 40. And we said since that is right in the middle, it would go, it would be rounded up. So 34, 33, 32, 31, and 30 would be rounded to 30, whereas 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 would be rounded to 40. Now, you're probably thinking, why is that the case? Let's have a look at which numbers will be rounded to 30. So as I said, 34 is one, so that's gonna go to 30. 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, and 25. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers that would be rounded to 30. And these are 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Now, when it comes, since 25 was rounded to 30, now 35 will, will be rounded to 40. So these are rounded up. So we've got 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43 and 44 are rounded to 40. So that cutoff point is that 5. So we can say 
that if the number ends in five, six, seven, eight, and nine, we round up, meaning we go to the largest number. So look at that. 35 was rounded up, so we went to 40. Now, which are the digits that would be rounded down? So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, as we said, 30 would be rounded to 30. 31 would be rounded to 30. 32 rounded to 30. 33 rounded to 30. And 34 rounded to 30. So that means we're rounding down. Let's have a look now at rounding some larger numbers to the nearest 10. So we've got hundreds in here so I will try and place these but I'll split the divisions first into 0 100 200 300 400 500 now again we're rounding these numbers to the nearest 10 so we'd still be counting as 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, 110, 120, 250. So we count in, in tens throughout. Let's place them where they belong first. So 132, where would that go? 132 is between 100 and 200. Halfway between them is 150. Now, is this bigger than 150 or smaller than 150? It is smaller. So I'll make a few more divisions here to see exactly where that's going to go. So 110, 120, 130, 140, and 150. That, this is specifically between 130 and 140. How do I know? Because I read this as 132. So it's larger than 130. So that's 110, 120, 130. And so that is here. Is it halfway through or is it closer to 130? That is, since it's 132, we can't place it halfway through. So it's closer to 130. So for that reason, I will round 132 to 130. Let's have a look at 288. Now 288 stands between 200 and 300. There is 250, 260, 270, 280, 290 and 300. 288 stands between 280 and 290. Is it halfway through? Is it 285 or more? It's actually more than that. So it's closer to 290. So I will write 290 underneath that. When it comes to 250, where does that stand? There is 200, 300, and we said this was 250, so it's right in the middle. But we're trying to decide which 10 it is nearest to. So we're looking at this digit, the 5 in there. Is it 250 or 260 that this is closer to? And as you can see, this is spot on 250. So to the nearest 10 that is exactly 250 so it doesn't change
Now, 300 I have. Where does that stand? And that, that's again spot on 300 here. And that would be between 300 and 310 because we're looking at the tens. But since it's spot on 300, that's rounded again. That's already rounded. So it's 300 to the nearest 10. Now, another way to do these would be to actually look at the last digit, as we said, at the units. And we went through the digits here in the previous example. So I'll use this method as it's then quicker to work with once you know what we're talking about. So we've got 16 pens to the nearest 10. So let's identify the tens digit. So that is 16, which means 10 and 6 pens. So the tens are here. The 6 is the unit and the 1 represent the tens. So I want to round this, meaning I'll keep it as 1 which would be just 10, or I'd make it into two, this digit, to make it 20. So I either say this is 10 or 20 to the nearest 10. And for to decide, I need to look at the units, at the, at the digit on the right. So that is a six, and what did we say? If that digit is a six, then we round up meaning that we'll go to 20 and that's exactly what we did when we went through the number line now let's look at 29 again we need to round to the nearest 10 so that's the tens digit looking at the digit on the right the units that is a nine which means that we're going to be rounding up so this becomes 30, and that's what we decided before as well. 35, again, we need to round that either down or up. So it's either 30 or 40. So we've got the 5 to look at. So that 5 is in the digits that mean we round up. So that's going to be 40. And... 43 again rounding this into 40 or 50 look at three that is one of the digits that we round down so we'll go to 40 now let's do these ones as well so we've got to look at the tens where is the tens and that's the tens digit and then looking again to the right so you need to determine that's a two which means we round down, so that's why we keep it 130. And looking at 288, the digit that represents sense is this one, but we need to look at the units on the right to determine. And that is an 8, which means we round up, so this becomes 290. 250. The digit that we need to round is this one. Do we keep it 250 or go to 260? And the zero next to it tells us where we need to round down. So we need to stay with 250. 300, where is the digit that represents the tens? This is the one. So again, that's a zero. Do we keep it as a zero or do we go up to one? We look at the units and that's a zero, which suggests that we stay down. So we keep it as 300. We'll now look at some worded questions examples. So we've got Alia went shopping and bought a pair of trousers for £18, a bag for £22 and a top for £13. Estimate the cost of Alia's shopping. So we asked to estimate not to work out the exact answer and when we estimate we use rounding with these numbers it seems right to round them to the nearest 10 
So I'd round this to 20 and this to 20 as well because it's 22 and 2 is lower than 5. And we've got 13 as well which will be rounded to 10. So we've got 20 and 20 and 10. All together this makes 50. So 50 pounds would be my answer. Let's double check. I've got 18 rounded to 20, 22 rounded to 20, 13 rounded to 10. And that is an estimate of the cost. Now the other question asks, Hannah spent 60 pence on a notebook, 8 pence on a curry bag and 29 pence on a ruler. How much did Hannah spend in total? So we've got to take account of these prices and total means we add in them together. Is this asking for us to estimate? No, it's not. It's all, all it's asking us to do is to actually work out the total. So I will go 60 and 8 gives me 68. Then I'll add 29 to it, so I'll go 68 plus 29. 60 and 20 makes 80. 8 and 9 makes 17. So 80 and 10 is 90 and the 7 is 97. So 97, what's the unit? It's pence throughout, so it's got to be pence. 97 pence is the cost. That's how much Hannah spent in total. Now the next part of the question says check your answer by rounding to the nearest 10. So I've got to round these amounts to the nearest 10 to work out the total to check that I've got this total correct. And if I get something that is close to it that means I've got it right. So 60 pence to the nearest 10 that is 60. 8 pence to the nearest 10 that is 10. And 29 pence to the nearest 10, that is 30. So 60 and 10 is 70 and 30 is 100. So that gives me 100 pence or one pound. And is that close to the 97 pence that we had before? It is. So that means I've checked my answer and it was right. If the answers didn't match, they were far away from each other, then I'd go back and check this again that I got it right.